Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the spontaneity of chemical reactions and chemical processes and then introduce this concept of entropy. So first off, what is a spontaneous process? So it's something that takes place without the input of energy from an external source. That kind of makes sense, it does it on its own accord. So when you're skiing, you can ski downhill, you cannot ski uphill, right? Water also runs downhill, that's spontaneous. If you have two gases separated and you open the valve between them, they will mix together. So that's spontaneous. The heat will flow from some hotter object to a colder object. And then you can burn methane, natural gas, in oxygen once you ignite it. And so spontaneous means that once the process is going, it'll keep going. Um, sometimes you still have to put in some energy in order to start it, but then it will be spontaneous. So you can imagine in the chemistry business, we're interested in how can you tell if some reaction or process is going to happen, which means how can we determine spontaneity? So the things we've talked about before up till now in this course is enthalpy mainly. And is there a link between this and spontaneity? And so, you know, first off you might think, yes, when you burn methane, it releases a bunch of heat and that's a spontaneous process. When you neutralize an acid with a base, that releases heat, and that's spontaneous. Okay, but then there's plenty of examples where this is not true. So if you have ice, and then you melt it, which we know this is spontaneous at some given temperature, um, then you have a positive enthalpy. This needs to absorb heat from the environment in order for ice to melt, but it does that very well, thank you. Also, if you take ammonium nitrate, which is the chemical that's present in those ice packs where you kind of break it a little and shake it up and it gets cold, that is a spontaneous process. And that also has a positive delta H. So moral of the story here is that we cannot use enthalpy as a criterion for spontaneity. It doesn't work. Another example, gases mix spontaneously. I already talked about this. And the enthalpy change here is roughly zero when you mix gases um, or expand them into different containers, but it's still spontaneous. So we need a new measure of spontaneity, and we have one, it's called entropy. And so the kind of simple definition of entropy is disorder, randomness. More disorder is more entropy. Um, to be a little more precise, entropy has to do with microstates which is just how many possibilities the system has for arrangement. Um, more of those, then you have a higher entropy. So again, in general, if you increase the order, you're going to decrease entropy. If you decrease the order, you're going to increase entropy, right? More disorder, more entropy. Handily, entropy is a state function, so you can determine your change in entropy just by taking final minus initial, so that's useful. All right, so what types of disorder do we have? So two main types here. You can have positional disorder, which would be distribution of particles in space. So say you have a gas in a small space and then you expand, you then have more uh, ways for those gas molecules to arrange themselves in that space, and thus that's higher entropy. Or if you have some reaction that makes more particles, then there's more ways to arrange them because there's more of them, and thus that increases entropy. You can also have thermal disorder. And so this ultimately comes from the quantization of energy at the molecular level. And so there's all these different states, rotational, vibrational, I mean, nuclear spin states, all kinds of different things that can hold energy. And if you have more thermal energy, there's more ways to place this energy around all these different quantized states. So more thermal energy, which means a higher temperature, more entropy. Some other things here, right? Since it's a state function, we can just take final minus initial. So if the entropy of your final state is greater than the initial, then your delta S is positive. And this is our spontaneous criterion, and we'll get into that thoroughly in a little bit. Then for any substance, the solid is lower entropy, the lowest entropy, the liquid has more, and the gas has way higher entropy. Because when you have a liquid versus a solid, there's more ways to arrange the particles because they're free to move. And when you have a gas, it's even more entropy because the particles are 
spread out across a much larger volume, that then there's many more ways to arrange those particles. So if you have some process that's working its way towards equilibrium, you'll start out at some entropy value, and then since a spontaneous process increases entropy, which we're kind of building towards our thorough definition of that, as you work towards equilibrium, you're gonna increase entropy, this is through the spontaneous process, and then once you reach equilibrium, well, remember the reaction is still going forwards in reverse, but overall, from a kind of statistical point of view, you're not increasing or decreasing the disorder when you're at equilibrium, and so the change in entropy is zero at equilibrium. So, all right, change in entropy, zero. Now, if you have an isolated system, which means no heat in or out, or no mass or particles in or out, then a spontaneous process there means you have to increase the entropy, more disorder. Now, if you have an unisolated system, then it's a little more complicated, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So, just to kind of drive this home, what processes lead to an increase in entropy? Here's some examples, right? I t hit on you melt or you vaporize something, and then if you have a solute and you dissolve it, that increases entropy because the particles now can arrange themselves in many different ways as opposed to being held in the solid. I talked about increased thermal disorder, and then we also hit on increase of particles. All right, so some simple questions and then we'll move on. So how does the entropy of the system change when you heat some, a gas? Well, your entropy is going to increase because there's more thermal energy and more ways to spread them about the various quantized energy level of the molecule. All right. What about when dry ice sublimes? The entropy here also increases because you go from a solid to a gas, and there's many more ways to arrange the particles of a gas than there are of a solid. All right, and this one will be your pre-quiz question. Um, what happens when sucrose crystallizes, i.e., forms a solid from a supersaturated solution of sucrose in water. All right, so now let's formalize this. The entropy of the universe increases in a spontaneous process. This is the second law of thermodynamics, and it remains unchanged in an equilibrium process. Right, so the first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy. That's a big one. And this one's just as big, that if you have some spontaneous process, you're going to increase entropy of the universe. No small thing, right? Um, and this is our definition of spontaneity for a process, which includes chemical reactions. Right, so your entropy change of your universe is going to be positive for a spontaneous process. And that means whatever you care about plus the rest of the universe, right? So our system is either just what's in our beaker, or our system could be maybe even the molecules dissolved in the liquid, and then the rest of the liquid and the rest of the universe are the surroundings. Something like that. Um, but when you're at equilibrium, these are equal to zero, because we talked about that. Now, let's put some examples on this to hopefully help it make more sense. So in an isolated system, means there's no heat in or out, and no exchange of material with the surroundings. Well, your surroundings don't know that the process or reaction is taking place, and so there's no entropy change there. So then that means that in a spontaneous process, your system, if it's isolated, has to itself increase in entropy, or when it's at equilibrium, it's equal to zero, the change in entropy. All right. Now it gets a little more complicated if you have a non-isolated system. Some system where you can, say, exchange heat with the surroundings, but we'll keep it simple and say that you're not exchanging material. So now here, your spontaneous process, the entropy change of the universe, has to be positive. So whatever the sum of these two are has to be positive. So there's three ways this can work out. So if both your entropy change of the system and the surroundings are positive, well, then this is going to be spontaneous. And so an example here is you have some chemical reaction that makes more particles, which is a positive entropy change, and also releases heat to the surroundings. So your system, the entropy increases because the particles, and your entropy of the surroundings increases because you heated it up. Now you could have one of these positive, one of these negative. So if the entropy change of your system is positive, but the entropy change of your surroundings is negative, this works 
as long as this number is bigger, right? We need uh, the overall to be positive. So as long as the one that's positive is bigger, then it'll still be spontaneous. So an example here could be if you melt ice, that increases disorder of the system, but it's going to remove heat from the surroundings because the ice has to absorb heat in order to melt. And so that will decrease the entropy of the surroundings, which is infavorable, except that your increase in entropy on the system overrides that. Now the other way around, say the entropy change of your system is negative, this still works out if the entropy change of the surroundings is positive and larger than the entropy change of the system, right? So as long as the positive thing's bigger. So an example here is ice freezing because that decreases disorder or increases order, however you want to say it, um, because the molecules of water are now confined into less orientation choices. But this is going to release heat when something freezes, and so then that increases the entropy of the surroundings, and then that overrides the overall calculation, and thus this is a spontaneous process. Of course, spontaneity here also depends on temperature, because ice will melt or freeze at different temperatures. And so the, when you dig into the theory a little more, it actually includes how entropy will fun change with temperature, uh, which we're not going to get into here. All right, let's step back for a minute and review the three laws of thermodynamics. So this one is old news, right? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. We talked about that in the first semester of this class. Now, the second law, entropy of the universe increases for a spontaneous process. All right, that's new here. But now let me introduce the third law to you. So the third law of thermodynamics is that the entropy of a perfect crystal is zero when your temperature is at absolute zero. So perfect crystal means that every molecule or atom or what have you is arranged precisely in the lattice with no vacancies or dislocations or any weird things like that. And then absolute zero means that there is no thermal energy left in the system. You've pulled it all out. And so there's no motion, there's no wiggling, there's no thermal energy to distribute amongst these different quantized states. And so therefore there is no disorder in this system. So this is new for entropy, that there's a theoretical zero. When we talked about enthalpy, we could never give the enthalpy of a certain product absolutely. But here we can with entropy. So this chart is cool too, so I'll talk about this. Um, that when you're way down here, you're at absolute zero, and so your entropy is equal to zero. We just mentioned why. And then as you heat it up, well, then you'll get an increase in entropy because now there's thermal energy that can distribute amongst these different states. Then once you hit the uh, melting point, you'll have a sudden increase in entropy when you go from a solid to a liquid. Then as you heat the liquid, entropy goes up. Then you have an even bigger sudden increase when you boil the thing because we talked about how this change from liquid to gas is much bigger than the change in solid to liquid in terms of possible orientations or distributions of particles. Then as you keep heating the gas, your entropy goes up as well. Okay, and that's all I have for this video. So keep this in mind because when we go forward, we're going to use entropy as part of an absolute determination of reaction spontaneity that's a little broader of a definition than what we talked about here. and you'll need to know what entropy is to do that. All right, thanks for watching.